Hi everyone, I'm John Ryder, and this is 5 Mods That Matter. On the very first day, you finally got your bike, it seems that everything is on point. The bike is beautiful and perfect as what it is. It says you're not gonna need anything else to perfect the bike because it already is. But things come to change inevitably. You will find a small thing that soars your eyes, and one will be followed by another and another and keep going. It will be eventually clear that there's no way you keep the satisfaction you once had with your bike without moss. So, now you want to spend more money for moss. The problem is, you don't know where to start. And that's where this video kicks in. Before you become cash strapped, buying a bunch of mods that doesn't even make sense, please consider those 5 mods I'm about to tell you. First, Fender Eliminator. This has always been the first thing I do whenever I got a new bike. Oh, Fenders. Oh god, oh those ugly things. This is a curse of modern bikes. Rear fender kills the dazzling and delicate look of bikes for good. This becomes far worse when it comes to sports bike. I just can't deal with this insensibility and indifference that ruined the complete look that once was perfect by itself. Yeah, yeah, sure, it has its own practical reason, but who's gonna ride a bike for practical reason anyway? We ride it because it's stupidly fast and insanely cool, not because it's practical. For me, the most beautiful bike is one that runs on track. It has no blinker, no rights, no fender obviously, and no nothing. It's the pure beauty itself. That's something I want. But we ride on road, not racing track, so we need rights, blinkers, and meters. Missing those things are not excusable. It's a safety concern. But Fender is not. It has nothing to do with safety. It's compromising the splendid look of your bike for only some stupid practical reasons. So, kill the enemy. Second, windscreen. Usually, I have no problems with the stock windscreen. They come in clear, not black or any other color that blocks your visibility and usually good shape and strong enough. In this case, what I mean is one that the previous owner of your bike installed. It is easy to find aftermarket windscreen installed and sometimes they are better but sometimes they aren't. I always prefer clear one to heavily tinted one. It's obvious, you need to look through your windscreen. That simple. And besides, clear windscreen looks better in most cases. Even if you have a stuck windscreen that is clear, it is still better to look for aftermarket windscreen. Because usually stuck one is not double bubble. And the double bubble windscreen gives you more wind protection and is easier to tuck in. But you have to know this, the double bubble windscreen is a bit uglier than regular one. That's sad, but true. Third, exhaust. Do I really have to point this out? Just listen. It even looks way cooler. Fourth, stretching swing arm. If you truly want your bike to be coolest ever, then you've got to stretch your swing arm so that it looks cool and sick at the same time. Oh yeah. <laughs> please, please don't do that. Fifth, seat cover. This is not crucial unless you bought an old used bike. If you did, then this means something to you. One of the significant things that makes your bike look old and dirty is the worn and faded leather that sits on your seat over years. 
It's a simple job, but its result will be magnificent. It blows your mind when you find how newer and better your bike looks. So those are five modes. Well, actually, it's more like four. So four modes that matter.